What's up fellow creators, Mike Flex here at 7 Studios for Otoy, and today we're going to take a look at a lesser known trick using default spheres inside of Cinema 4D to generate randomized procedural clouds of any size on the fly. So first off, we're going to go into our objects drop down inside of our Octane Live Viewer window, Octane VDB Volume. Next step is to create a primitive sphere by clicking and holding on this blue cube, dragging over to sphere and letting go. Click and drag that on top of the VDB volume object over here in the objects panel to create a child. And the segments are not that important here. Let's make them as low as possible, 16 to keep it nice and light for cinema's viewport. And render perfect does not make any difference to us whatsoever. Please be mindful not to convert this to geometry for any reason. Don't click make editable. Don't tap on it and click C because if you do, it will not be seen by the VDB volume. Also, please do not group your spheres because if there's anything but a sphere below the VDB volume, it simply won't see it. So the only thing that you can have as a child of a VDB volume is a sphere primitive. And if you try to add any of these other primitives, it won't see those either. Inside of the VDB volume object in the main tab, if you change the type over to generator, this is how you start to see the effect. So why don't we start up the render here and you can see that there is something happening, but maybe not the right thing. First, make sure that you are in model mode and not object mode. And we will size our sphere down by scaling it to make sure it doesn't clip through the edges of this domain. Obviously you can uh, increase the size of the domain as well by going to the generate tab and sizing up the domain in the size parameter here. So as long as your VDB is being contained within the volume, then it will not clip. So if we take this sphere and we duplicate it by going to move tool, holding control and clicking and dragging on one of these axes, uh, we'll just scale this one down a little bit so we can tell the difference. And you'll see that over in the octane render view that we're starting to build up a volume. So I will now hold control and create one more. So we have a little stylized cloud here. This is my favorite starting cloud shape. Kind of reminds me almost of uh, like Homestar Runner clouds. And the first thing uh, to do to make sure that you're really seeing what you're building up here in the work plane view is to turn off the display flags for these spheres because they're actually blocking the information that's being displayed. So if we just click twice on the top one, drag straight down to paint them all away, then you can see that we have the voxel size being represented by these little cubes here. And you can actually change those to be circles if you want by clicking on the VDB volume, going in the generate tab, and down here at display type, change that over to either circle or box. It's currently on box. Uh, line and object don't seem to work for me currently. And circle uh, will kind of display a accurate description of how the feathering is working, which is controlled here by edge feather. And if you begin to turn this up, you'll see that reflected over in the, the color changing here in the viewport. So that doesn't uh, necessarily affect what you're seeing here just yet, because there are a couple reasons for that. One of the things to keep in mind is scene scale. And right now we have uh, maybe a six foot wide cloud. I don't think that there are many visible dense clouds in the sky that are only six feet. Um, and if they were, they would be extremely small because most clouds you're seeing are a couple hundred feet above you. Um, so I would assume that a real world cloud scale is maybe somewhere closer to a couple hundred feet across. So we can do that um, by, you know, sizing up the bounds and then sizing up the spheres. But of course you can do that all at once as long as you are in model mode and not object mode by clicking the VDB volume first, clicking on scale and just scaling that up. And by zooming out on the scene, the grid will begin to adjust to compensate for how far you're zoomed out. So instead of them being one foot across when I'm zoomed in close here, when I zoom back, now they're 16 feet across, continue to zoom back, now they're 164 feet across. So this is closer to what I'm going to assume a cloud size is. And I'm gonna scale this whole container up until it's roughly 300 feet across, cause that works for me, right? So 
Something worth noting is that you can make these clip through the side uh, artistically by selecting all of them, clicking on your move tool, and dragging them down so they begin to intersect with the edge. So this can create some really interesting um, artifacts that are undesirable, <laughs> and that will be most noticeable if you are viewing it from the side that they're clipping through. Uh, in some cases, uh, if you're viewing it from the opposite side, from the plane that it's clipping through, you won't be able to see any type of artifact at all. And that's maybe a little more visible if we go into the volume, go into the medium, go inside here, and bring the volume step length up a little bit. And that will begin to allow us to see inside of this fog volume a little more. And now we can see the effect of the edge feather a little bit better if I go into the volume, go into the generate tab, and I pull this all the way back, you'll see that we get this really ugly kind of hard clip on the bottom here. And if you bring it up even the smallest, smallest amount, that will go away. Um, so, you know, even the tiniest amount of edge feather is good. And then if you start to bring it in even more, it will uh, walk that backward away from the edge. Um, the only thing to keep in mind with when you're clipping through the edge is that when you begin to displace this, which I'll show you in just a moment, uh, it can cause additional artifacts that you might need to do some more tweaking uh, to mitigate. So the density of the medium, if I bring the volume step length way up and bring the density way up, we can begin to see the voxels. And that's really not a problem uh, when it comes to the displacement side of things. When you're just, you know, uh, leaving it at this large of a voxel size relatively and cranking up density and lowering step length, you'll start to see those edges. And I believe that if we were to mess with the edge feather, you know, you can see how that affects the shape itself, at least along the edge that it's clipping through. So you can size down the voxels if you want. It's going to require more calculation time in general, uh, but you can get you know something even smoother if that's what you're going for. Again, don't really be too concerned with that to start, simply because we're going to displace the heck out of it and uh, it won't be as noticeable anymore. Uh, the next thing to bring into our scene is an octane daylight, which we can get by going to the objects, lights, octane daylight. And I like to rotate it until we kind of get like a bit of a, a golden hour look. This can be really useful for, you know, look dev as you build up your cloud to see kind of the way that it would look in a sky. So tilting upward at the cloud is probably the most realistic way to do it. And if we go into the VDV volume, into the medium, and then we increase that volume step length, we can allow more light to pass through it and we can decrease the density. And both of these are ways to, you know, begin to achieve um, a more realistic or stylized look depending on what it is that you're going for. So if you bring the step length way, way down, it pretty much turns it into a solid object. Um, so that can be its own useful thing. And isn't that cute? Uh, bring the density way down. And you can see that, you know, it's a little storm cloud. And here in the scattering, if I was to bring the value of that up a little bit, not bad. Go into the absorption, adjust that. Now you can see that if I go up closer to kind of 0.9 around here, um, you know, we're getting a different look. Now the scattering phase is really important. The ramps I will get into in just a moment, but you can kind of see that there's a give and take between all of these different sliders. And uh, to get the look that you're going for, it's going to require some tweaking. Uh, there's kind of no set it and forget it preset for this sort of thing. You just kind of want to understand what it is that you're doing. Uh, and I will warn you that as you're doing this style of look dev, you definitely want to save often. Uh, this can be very uh, unstable in general to use this method, which is honestly a little bit of a hack. And when you start inside of the medium itself doing the displacement part, which is here under displacement, you click this little button, OSL displacement, and that automatically assigns a node 
that is an OSL texture node that has the correct text file loaded up inside of it. So if we go inside of that and go down to the bottom, you'll see that there are parameters that are being defined by this code above. And we can move these sliders and by increasing it, you can see that there's a very, very tiny noise that's being applied, applied to all of this, right? But if I take the frequency way down and start to scale it up, you can see that I can do very, very low values. And by doing those low values and maybe without having quite as much of an amount, we can t go from this completely stylized look to something that's just slightly off from the shape that we made, but much more cloudy. And once you do a single layer of that, there's an entire second layer that's this displacer, these two down here. And if you turn it from zero to one, you in most cases won't really see much of an effect, but you can type in a larger amount. So I'll say 10. And now we see that there is a finer noise on top of the initial noise. So not only did I take the shape and kind of tweak it out, but then I was able to add an additional layer of detail atop that. And if we bring that frequency down just a little bit, you can see that I can kind of get a nice chunky look to it. And now let's hop back in and mess around with some of these interconnected sliders, which are density, volume step length, and the scattering phase. Um, don't be afraid to apply a color to these to see what your effect is. You know, you can get a nice edge look here. And when you have assigned a color in the scattering, definitely play with the phase because that's going to be greatly affecting uh, the way that the light travels through that object. So you can see that you can go, but you know, vibe wise, very, very far, just with very few uh, slider interactions. You can go from a storm cloud to something that looks really kind of wispy and whimsical. And uh, of course, you can take off quite a bit of that displacement um, and get something that's, you know, just cartoony looking, depending on the project that you're working on, all of these different looks uh, may come in handy. So photorealistic, stylized, doesn't really matter. You can get just about anything out of it. And then, then one other thing I want to show you guys is that you can use these inside of a cloner as long as you're uh, obeying a specific set of parameters. So we'll drop a cloner in, make sure that that cloner instance mode is set to instance, drop the VDB volume inside of that, and make sure that you are on something like a grid array. And what it's doing right now is it's spreading those out. And I'm going to quickly say 50, 50. And an artifact is created right away because we have overlapping volumes and we will resolve that inside of Octane settings here, max overlap volumes. I'm gonna turn that up to be, encompass as many volumes as we have. Let's add one more just in case. And right now, it's the same shape and it's being, you know, just lined up among itself. But what we can do to get a better look, as you can imagine, is assign a MoGraph effector here, which is a random effector. Random. And in that random effector, we can adjust the position. We'll say 20, 20, none in the Y, the scale uniform 0.1 and then the rotation will say 360 boom and the really cool thing about this setup that we've just configured here is that you can go into the cloner I'm sorry into the effector and down at the effector tab there is a seed and if you move the seed now you automatically get a wide variety of clouds and you don't need to be using any external programs to get there. So as you can imagine, then you hop back inside that volume, go inside, you can mess with your step length, you can mess with your displacement settings, your absorption. And then the one final thing I wanna point out to you guys is that the absorption ramp and the scattering ramp, they accept the volume gradient or, and or volume ramp node, but it's named two different things in the same software, so it can be very, very confusing. If we click this little arrow and we go to plugins, octane, down at the bottom, we have volume gradient, right? And sorry that that made it so ugly, we'll clear that out real quick. But what I do wanna point out 
is that if you are in the Octane volume here, you can click this little node editor button to open up the node editor for the volume itself. Uh, usually this is something that you might not be familiar with accessing outside of a material, but yes, there are nodes uh, inside of um, you know mediums and you get there uh, either by clicking this little button or by having VDB volume selected here in the panel and saying get active tag object and it'll pull it up. If you select everything that is visible, right click on it and say auto arrange selected, that'll make it prettier. And I just wanted to point out that here in the list, volume ramp is what it's named, whereas it comes up as volume gradient. And even if we bring in this volume ramp, it still says volume gradient right there. And if we delete it and we click on one of the pins that it can go into, click off and let go, you can see that it pulls up volume ramp. So very confusing that it comes up in this list as a volume gradient. And even if you create it here, it still says volume gradient. Um, but that's a really great way to uh, bring in that ramp really quickly and easily here inside the node editor. So that's it for making procedural clouds here inside of Cinema 4D. If you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments. Please like and subscribe the video if you'd like to see more of this and you want to be alerted when I upload new videos. Thank you guys so much. Peace out.